So let's take a minute and um, just go over these solutions. And let's see how you're doing on it and what you are thinking. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And pause the video at any time, back up, uh, ask questions, whatever, whatever it is you need. So on this first one, on number one, for group one up here, I got that this was the mean and this was the median. And for group two, I got this mean, this median. Two things, remember for the mean, this is where you add them all together and divide by how many. And for the median, you have to put them in order from least to greatest, that's huge. Always put these in order from least to greatest, then you can find the median. And if it's between two numbers, you take the average of those two numbers. Um, and then since I had them in order, I put, I found the lower quartile on the upper quartile, right? Cut it in half, so what's in the middle of the lower part? What's in the middle of the upper part? And then I could draw my box plots off of that. So here's my box plot for group one, looking at this. Lower extremes, 58. Uh, sorry, group one is the top one. Lower, uh, lower extremes, 27. Lower quartiles at 30. Medians at 50. Upper quartile, etc. And you can see that group two looks kind of skewed to the right, right? How it's spread out like that up there. So that helps us think about this. And this one looks pretty symmetrical. Looks like these group two scores are all higher than these group one scores too. Almost all, mostly. Um, comparing those two data sets, you can tell some of the things that I said. Um, I also says since group one is pretty symmetrical, it seems that happiness without kale is, is well spread out, it's evenly distributed. So people who ate kale, it seems like just have this average spread of happiness. Uh, group two, the kale eaters spreads to the right, uh, skews to the right. So maybe that means that certain people are really affected by kale, like it makes them really happy. Who knows what's going on? Okay, next page. First off, you gotta get those row and column totals. So you can do all these. And uh, just, I'm going to look at answers real quick, but just think when you set these up, of those who are right-handed. So that's telling you all the right-handed, all the right-handed people. So of those who are right-handed, that's the total of right-handers. Boop. The proportion who were found. That would be this one. How many of them are found? And notice that became... My numerator, you divide it out. So you can see I got 0.78 here. Um, of those who are right-handed who were not found, same total, but different group uh, from that same big group. I got 0.22. Since these are all of those who are right-handed, those are all the same total group. Those should add to 100 or, or one, to, you know, if you're doing percents or, or proportions. Uh, of those who are left-handed, those who are found, 29%. Of those who are right-handed, not found 71%. Just those answers. Of those found, the proportion who are right-handed. Of those found, so people who were found, that's this total right here. Uh, who, the number who are right-handed, 699. So 699 minus that total. Here's my answers for these ones. Check it out. 0 0.83, 83%. 0 0.17. 0 0.36, 0 0.64. And again, this should add to 100. This should add to 100 because they're from the same group of those not found, of those not found. And you can draw some conclusions. Uh, oh, one more last piece. What was the overall found rate for participants? In other words, what percentage of players were found? So our total is the total number of players and the total number of people found. So that's going to be uh, the total. Whoops. The total found and the is 804 and the total number of players is 1324. And it looks like oh, there's a mistake. Let me fix that. So the total found are 804. Good thing I checked this. Grab my calculator real quick. 804 divided by 1324. I get about 0.61. So around 61%.
So 61% of all the players were found. But notice, like with the left-handers, um, sorry. But notice with the left-handers, uh, these left-handers, only 17% of them were found, of the people who were found. And uh, so that seems like lefties are less likely to be found for whatever reason. So you would, would need to come up with some theory as to why we don't have, you know, any causation. It just looks correlational. So we don't know, but, you know, give a theory. Maybe they're just crafty. Maybe they're just really clever. Okay. Um, on this last one, we're asked to find the residuals, right? So remember residuals are the actual value. So this is the actual value minus the predicted value. So residual is actual minus predicted. And the way we get to the predicted is we use this least squares fit. Remember like this would have been a scatter plot and someone did a least squares fit in there. And so they're saying that's the predicted, that's the actual. These are all the distances from the actual to the actual line. And the way we get these predicted values is we take the independent variable and we plug it in. So we plug a one in, right? Like here's our day, we plug our one in crank it out on our calculator, get an answer. So there's our predicted. Actual minus predicted, two minus 11.6 gives us negative 9.6, so that's the residual. That's how far away from the line the actual point was, down 9.6. So here's all our residuals. Notice we just crank them out, like here, plug in the 11, boop, there's your predicted, actual minus predicted. And uh, we make our residual plot, and it looks looks like a definitely a pattern. So I would say the model's probably not a great fit. All right, are you ready for that assessment?